Okay, so this class this evening is on how to uh, operate our new mobile data terminals, or MDT, is what they're referred to. We do not have it on every vehicle in the fleet, but that is a process by which we're going forward to, uh, to do that. They are on our first out vehicles, most all the first out vehicles in the fleet. And uh, what you should see when you get in the truck is the computer terminal that looks just like this. It should already be logged in, should already be set up and running. So we're going to operate the class from the aspect of the fact that the MDT is up and running and in service. So we know the unit is in service because we can look up here in this top corner and the long colored line in this top right corner shows whether we're logged into the CAD or not. So this mobile data terminal is actually a CAD reporting system for what the dispatcher sees and what you see. It's all virtually uh, real time. There's just a slight delay in between the two, but it's almost imperceptible for what you have. So as we look at this particular uh, mobile data terminal, this is the one that's out of my truck. Uh, we have it listed right now where it, it can show virtually all the fire service and medical calls that come in. And I wanted to do that so that you could, we could actually open up and see some different calls as they were pending and as they were moving through. So the, the top area, the main area that you see indicates the various calls that are active in an active state right now. So right now, we have a stroke call that's going on at this particular address, and uh, Rescue 2 from Franklin and Medic 2 are on that particular call. We also have a fall that's going on, Medic 3 is on it, and a hospital transfer where Medic 3, I'm sorry, Medic 4 is on the fall, and Medic 3 is on this hospital transfer. They show you the addresses, the elapsed time, and just the priority that's within here. The buttons across the top are all uh, hotkeys that stay there all the time. They're open all the time. Each one of them does a different thing. If you'll remember this particular button here, which is kind of in the center, and if you think about an iPhone with the home button, that sound center button on the bottom of your iPhone being the home key, if you'll think of that as the home key, it'll always bring you back to this screen. So it'll always take you back there for no matter where you are. So you get into something and you're like, uh-oh, I don't want to be in this particular area. Just hit this button, it'll bring you right back to this, and you can start over again, okay? Some screens will take you from where they are back one screen, but most all of them will this considered as a home screen. So let's start from this side of the hotkeys and work our way over real quickly. The button in the top left is the log out. You don't want to mess with that. That's only going to be if you're going to turn the machine off completely. We're going to log out of the CAD system and log out completely. So we're not going to mess with that. So this is what it would bring up. Just touch the mic anywhere in that area and it'll bring you right back to here. The next button is the on scene key. That, we won't touch those just yet. Hang on to that. Hit the OK button. So next is the on scene button. That key is what we'll use to log ourselves on the scene. We'll get to that in a few minutes. The uh, checkered flag is destination. That's really for just the ambulances. It a, a, <coughs> turns everything black, showing that they're actually at the hospital, which I think is a little ironic that they're going to be black at the hospital at any rate. Uh, your quarters button is when you actually check into your quarters. Uh, when you hit that button, it's going to bring up another screen that you'll look at and be able to select which station you're at. Out of service indicates if the truck's going to be out of service for some reason. Uh, whether it's broken or uh, training or whatever. Available is just exactly that. After you've cleared the call, I'm, I'm done with the call, I want to go back available, I want to hit the available button. It's going to bring up another window and you'll scroll through there to select which one of those are. Now that's, there's multiple selections in there because of the ambulance service. They have multiple available levels. We will only have the one and it's the very first one available. You just hit submit. We'll look at that in a few minutes. There's a message button where you can uh, send messages to and from different things. You can actually send an email from this MDT to someone uh, out in the field or to Captain Homrich or myself or something like that. You can send email through the system, though that's not typically happened. That doesn't usually happen. The mail is where you receive some type of email or some type of message. That particular button is going to be flashing blue if you have some sort of mail. It's also going to flash blue if you've got an update ready for the MDT. The only time the MDT needs an update is when uh, the dispatch center has sent out an update for it. And usually that has something to do with the mapping system. 
Uh, our GIS guy, Alex Rexrode, uh, worked very difficult, very, very long hours working on updating the maps and uh, keeps those maps updated. So you'll see that flash two or three times a week. Every time you see it flash and you want to go to that, you want to go to the update uh, function and update the system, and it will only take just 15 seconds or so to update. If you wait for a week or two and have multiple updates, it's going to take a lot longer in order to update. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. We've already talked about the view all calls button, which is the home key. View all units. Go ahead and touch that button if you will, please. So in this particular window is where we're going to see every unit that's available to view within our CAD and what their status is, where they happen to be. You can scroll down <coughs> over here and it'll simply list everything that's available out there and what, where they are. This is one area also, touch the watch list please. <coughs> this is where we're going to build that front home screen so if we want to see what calls we want to actually see in there. So if all we want to see is the rescue squad uh, function, scroll down here just a little bit here, <coughs> then we're going to see WCRS and that's the only thing we're going to have in this particular window. And when we hit OK, that's all we'll see. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they'll be the only ones we see all the time. It'll just be those are the ones we see when we have an active call. So if an ambulance gets put on that same call, then what we would have is this would be whited out. <coughs> Where'd you get? Go here, back to all, you all call, please. So this would all be whited out. There'd be nothing there until we actually received a call, the rescue squad. You'd see that. But if the ambulance medic nine was put on that same call, you'd also see them as well. So everybody that deals with that particular call is when you see them. Uh, so let's jump on down here. Let's go ahead and do the, the stroke. So if we get a call, we're going to hit stroke. And all you got to do is tap the, the, uh, the problem nature part, and it's going to open up a new window. So as we look inside this window, this opens the actual call up. So as we look at the call, we see everything the dispatcher sees and everything they know. Down here in the comments, this is everything that the dispatcher has been putting in about that call, that particular incident. So we can see everything that they've taken information. The call taker is going to take a little bit of information and they're going to type, type it across the counter. And as you scroll down over here, you can see it from the very beginning and it stacks from, from the beginning down at the bottom to the most current at the very top. <clears throat> so if you're getting in the car and you're fixing to respond out on a medical call and you want to see everything that's happened before you left, you just scroll down here and you can read everything that took place within that particular call. Read all the way up and you're ready to go. Most of the information you're going to see is something uh, like here. This is an 80-year-old female patient with a history of stroke. These are the units that went. She's home alone right now, unknown if the door is unlocked. Complaint is on 96. Uh, passing Kroger should be there in 10 minutes. So this is a secondary call that's called in. Could only respond in one word responses. This is it. That's what the complainant's driving. So these are the information that we know on our way there. We're not having to ask for information or we're not having to rely on the fact that the dispatcher is giving us the information we want to know. We know everything they know right here, okay? So all of this information is here. The neat thing about this, the uh, box, and this large box right here indicates the units that are assigned to the call. You'll notice these are in red. They're in red because they're actually on the scene. If they were orange, then they would be in route. They're on their way to the call. If they're yellow, then they've been dispatched and nothing's happened yet. So let's, uh, let's say they decide to put uh, Station 24 on this particular call. Then what they're going to do is you'll see S24RS in yellow. That indicates Station 24 has been paged out to the call. That, when it goes to yellow there, that's what triggers your I am responding. That's what triggers your I am responding dispatch, your digital dispatch. So that stays on there, and then when you get here to the, to the station, you take off, let's say, let's say Utility 24 we're going to leave with. You're going to say Utility 24 responding. They'll change up here. They'll add another box that says U24RS. That's what the cab recognizes as Utility 24, and it'll show your orange. And then, then your yellow S24 goes away. And the purpose for that is it allows for Station 24 now to be dispatched on another call. 
So as long as that station appears here, the CAD doesn't recognize it as being available for another call. So that's how that works, okay? So when this is orange, or let's say at this particular point, I wanna, I wanna go on this call. Let's just, because we can do it, go ahead and we're gonna put myself on this call. So in route right here, I just touch that. Incident assigned. Proceed to route. Proceed to route. And that's exactly what happens. Notice I'm orange. So it's saying that I have checked in route to this particular call. All right? So now I'm on my way. They've canceled me. Why, why is Jay going on this call? Blah, 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 blah. So now we're going to go over here. I'm going to go ahead and go available. So hit available. And it brings up this list. The first one I want is the, the available button. And I just hit submit. And now I'm cleared from the call. It's going to be requested. It'll clear, it'll clear me out here pretty quick. So now what's happened is I've cleared that particular call. So each one of these times I've touched a button, the CAD is recording my particular time to go in there and, and, and stamp timestamp within that CAD. So when you've asked for your times for being on scene, You've asked for a particular time by dispatch. You're waiting for them to do all this manipulation. In the mobile data terminal, you're doing that yourself. So everything you're doing within this, you're doing it on your own, your, your own time. So what's happened, see up here in the red? This means it's logged off the system. So what happens, the, the uh, Wi-Fi kind of goofed just a little bit, and it'll, it'll kick back on here and say, just tap anywhere and it'll go, that message will go away. So in a few minutes, this is going to reset, and it'll go back to, to now. See, I'm back on, and it's kicked back on. So now in the process of putting us on scene, of putting in route and on scene, all of my times are getting logged into the CAD automatically. And when your firehouse, this is tied, firehouse is now tied into the CAD. So when you come back for your report and you open up your report, you're going to see your times exactly what you've tapped in here. So we're not going to have any more of those gaps in time where we say we were en route, we got on scene, but I know that you know they, they gave us a 12-minute response time, but I know we got there in six minutes. Those types of things, those will all go away by, by using this because there's no reason for them to have anything to, to have anything else. You're the one who made the, who, who punched the button, okay? So I, that'll all work out from there. So looking at this particular call, this is the open an open call of what we have here. Down at the bottom, every one of these are set by GPS as well. So the map, we can see where we're going to go. Let's go ahead and touch map. And that's going to bring up this particular call. It's going to bring up the particular incident about where we're going to go. Now, it's not going to anymore because I'm not on the call anymore. I forgot to. I should have done it when I was in there. But at any rate, the map will center in on where you're going to go. You'll also notice other trucks that are out there in the, in the general neighborhood of where they are. If they have a mobile data terminal, you'll see them on that particular map, and you'll see them moving. So this is uh, truck six, tower six from Franklin, and where they are, where they're responding to, they're showing it available, whereas these others, station six, rescue three, ladder four, they're purple, and purple indicates in quarters. So we know that's where those stations are, okay? If we were on the call, see here's Medic 1. Let's say Medic 1 is coming to this call where we are. You can actually see Medic 1 driving down the road, and you can see where they are. So you can actually tell kind of from your own MDT what that distance is and how long it's going to take for them to get to you. So that's <laughs> another way to use this thing. Uh, when I open up that map and I'm going on the call, it's going to have a blue line telling me exactly how to get there. Now, this is not like your GPS unit in the car where it uh, recalculates every time you turn in a different way from what it says. It says this is the way to go, and it's figuring its fastest route from your exact location. There's another thing down here that says recalculate. You can touch that. So if you decide you want to go from a different path, and you kind of get off, you can touch recalculate and it'll readjust from where you are. But you really want to listen to, the, to this computer versus your GPS because in this computer, on this GPS unit, it's taking into consideration all the roads that have been closed and it routes you around those. 
So in flood situations, the other night we had some flooding, and you got the I am responding, uh, you know, information kicked out about the, those streets. If there were any calls around those, this unit here would take you around it to figure out what's the fastest way to get around those closed roads and those closed areas. So this should be your automatic default understanding of how to get there. You can hear her talking. She's been talking to you on the, on the speaker here of exactly what she says, and uh, she'll tell you, you know, a quarter of a mile, turn left. Now, a lot of that is based on how fast you're driving. So if you're driving really faster than what the computer's going to keep up with, you're going you're gonna to jump ahead of her, and you may be turning left already, and she's told you three or four minutes later to turn left. Well, I know that. I've already turned it. So she's, she's thinking in terms of where you are at that point, and the GPS trying to keep up with you. So uh, to clear this route, all we got to do is touch clear route down here, and that'll go away, and it'll reset to where your current location is. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and go back to view all calls. And since it's flashing, see how the mail is flashing right now, the blue? That's indicating we have a message. And all that message is is that it's, it's sent out a message. So let's tap that, and it'll open it up. So you'll see this line here, and it's simply saying, that we didn't get that request, and that was because this, the system kicked me off right away, but it's, it'll go, go ahead and go. So what I will have, if I were to have an uh, update, it'll say something like switch to VM application. And what that means is, it means it wants you to close this window out and go to the update. So when you're seeing this, these are in tablet mode. The button right down here in the bottom with the little squares, that's the one you want to hit. So let's touch that right quick. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring you up all the windows that you have available to see that are, that are out there. So this TriTech button or this TriTech window is the window that governs your system and whether you want to update it or not. Go ahead and go, hit back this again one more time. There will be another window right here with just a square in it. That's the update now button. Okay, So you'll just touch that and it'll bring it up. And you'll see the words update now. All you have to do is touch it, and in about 15 seconds, it'll flash and do a couple of things, and then all of a sudden, this will come back on. Go ahead and hit that one back on. It'll bring it back up, and it wants you to log back in. So for now, let's go ahead and log out. Tap the log out button and hit log out. And this is what you'll, that screen will come up to look like. So this is your login at the very beginning. What you're going to want to have on these two windows is the exact same thing. On your engine, which is the only thing you've got an MDT on right now, it'll say E24RS, and it'll say the same thing right here. All you have to do is tap login, and it'll bring it right back up. The window down here is for departments or agencies that have somebody dedicated to that particular unit at all times. Like for mine, with my unit, go ahead and tap my name. And then scroll up just a little bit and we're going to bring me over. And now we're going to hit log in. New message. And it runs through and it brings me back up. So hit the home screen and I'm back into where, I'm, where I normally am. Now what the CAD has done is it's registered that 1140 is available and 1140 is me. I'm, I'm registered to the <coughs> car, okay? And that's the way to set up. So when you get back to the in, to the station, you should be sort of looking at this particular screen. But as you pull in the station, you want to hit the quarters button. Go ahead and tap the quarters button for just a second. And see, it's going to bring you several different options. You can just scroll through whichever one you want to hit, and that's where you're in quarters at. So just tap uh, view all calls again. And what will happen is up here where it says available will turn purple. And it'll say in quarters, but let's say you've, you've set, selected in quarters at station 14 for training. That's where it's going to put you. The CAD's going to put your truck at station 14 on that map, and that's how it works. So real quickly, let's open up another call. Go ahead and open up that, uh, that stroke call again, please. So we're going to navigate through this and show you the different things that are available within a call. Everything that you see, it can't be changed. There's nothing that can be changed in this top part up here. So you can't really mess with anything up here and hurt it. Uh, down here, 
are all time stamped items that you can change or you can deal with over here. You can look at the full thing by just clicking view and it'll bring up that entire thing. So in case there's something that you're missing on that line, <coughs> but you can also add your own comment in here. And what you would do is just tap add comment and it's going to bring up a box. And now what I can do is I can type inside that box. But remember, we're in tablet mode, so you can't really see your keyboard. But what you can do is down here in the bottom, there's a little picture of a keyboard down here. And if I tap that, then it's going to bring up a keyboard on the screen. And now I simply type in exactly what I want to type in. When I'm done, I hit this X. And then I'm going to hit OK. But right now we'll hit, or that's OK. So what it does is it, add, it adds in a line of whatever I typed in in that particular unit. So if I typed in something like, uh, you know, fire's under control or the fire is, has, we, we've stopped the fire on the B side of the building, we're still working on the alpha side, something like that, you know, whatever I want to put in as additional comments, I can add those into the unit, into the CAD system on my, for my notes personally, and it's tagged from me. So it shows, it, it indicates that it's coming from me, that I'm the one who put it in. What yours would say is engine 24 across there, or whatever unit you're actually pushing. So that's how we add a comment to it. Uh, these buttons across here, these tabs, are different files that show different things. So in this particular address here on 101 Ren Court, let's tap Priors. And we can see all the different calls that have taken place from that particular address and what happened. So there was a test call on a April 16th. There was a citizen's assist, and there was a fire alarm, residential fire alarm on the 29th of July. So we can look and see what, what all's happened at that particular call in the past. Another thing that we can do is we can tap on the caller. So as we tap on that, we can look at here. Now this might be somebody who's different than the call, the, the call where we're going to. Okay, so this is a person who we actually made the phone call, and they made the 911 call to. So we can make a call back to this guy if we need to directly for ourselves because we have that information. If there's hazmat that's stored there, we can tap on hazmat and it'll come up. Uh, this is our kind of our main one that we want to look at is caution. If the caution is red, and I think it flashes too, I don't remember. But it, if, I know it's red if there's something there. Uh, if it's red, that means there's some sort of flag that's been placed on that address. And that could be something that's uh, uh, very important for us to know in terms of there's a paraplegic there, or this is a known drug house, this is a place that's uh, got violent people in it, something like that, you know, all, anything like that. Uh, over the last six years or so, as I hear people say something over the radio that I feel like we really ought to remember that for that particular address. I call up to dispatch and I ask them to flag the address. This is where those go. This is where all of those happen. So any of those past instances, that's going to be right there and you'll be able to pull it up and look at it yourself. Dispatch over the years has supposed to look at it, pop, open it up and give us that information. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It just depends on how busy they are. Now with the MDT, you have that capability. You can see it yourself. So that's in the caution area. Uh, tap on premise, please. Where we tap on this particular one, there's a button over here, a key, that for future use, that will be where we can store our pre-plans. Now pre-plan is where we go to a business and we do a pre-inspection on it, not an inspection, but a pre uh, like a pre-fire plan, a plan on how we're going to attack that particular fire building should there be an incident there, gathering whatever information we can. My hope is to create a consistent pre-planned uh, sheet of paper that on one piece of paper we can look at all of that information and we can see it all the way across the whole county. And then what we would do is we would upload it to the CAD and when you tap that button, it'll pull up a PDF file from the files, and they'll open up that particular sheet of paper and give you the pre-plan for that business. That's in the future. That's what I'd like to see happen down the road. Uh, gives you the idea of where your hydrant addresses are. When you look at the map, you can open the map up. You can zoom down to a particular place, and you can see the fire hydrants from GIS data that's on there. 
We do not have the data in there right now to show what color the hydrant is, but we, that's the plan that we can eventually get to that point. Uh, here you can map the call. So map where it particularly is. Go ahead and tap that and see if it'll actually show us. Yeah, so here it's showing us, oh, here's the stroke right here. So it's gonna show us where that, that particular call is and give us that, that particular information. We can zoom down into it. Go ahead and zoom down to that stroke call. All you have to do is just do like you do on your iPhone and it goes zoop. Or you can hit the zoom in button over and over again, whatever you wanna do. And what takes place is the map refreshes and it'll take you a couple of minutes, but now you see how it's popping up. So here we have a fire hydrant here and a fire hydrant here on either location of that particular house, that address. So now we can see where the fire hydrants are located. We know exactly where the house is. You can see each one of these numbers is the street address for those homes. And again, if I was mapping this, if it was telling me how to get there, there'd be a little blue dotted line telling me exactly how to get there to follow that, that incident. To get out of this, we just hit our home button and we're back to the main screen. Uh, if it's late at night, and you're driving down the road and this screen is, is too bright for you, you can hit the not, night mode and it will invert the colors so it'll be much darker. When it's darker like this, this allows you to be able to see a little bit better at night. Uh, personally, I don't care for this. I can't see these words very well in here at night. So if you don't like that, you can just hit night mode again and it'll go right back to where it was. What I've done is I've programmed every one of the computers at 7 p.m. to go to what's called nightlight mode and it kind of dims the computer down, turns it a little more yellow color so that uh, it's not quite as bright in the cab of the truck. And then at 7 a.m. it'll come right back up to full brightness. It just does that on its own. So it's all set up for you to do that. Personally, I have found that to be most helpful in my truck, responding that it's, that it's uh, pretty good that way. You'll note that in the apparatus, the, we've been placing the MDTs right in the center of the console. So if you have a, uh, someone driving in the officer's seat, riding in the officer's seat, you can turn that computer all the way around there and let them operate the MDT. However, if you are responding by yourself, you can turn the MDT to face you and you can manipulate it as you need to from there. But you just kind of do it a little bit at a time as you can. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else that we need to go over with that. I believe that's virtually everything. Does anybody have any questions on how to operate it at this point? Should they hit the in route button when they check in route? That's a good point. When to, when to hit the in route button. So what I want to do when I get in the car or in the truck, I'm going to immediately open up whichever call I have. So I'll hit the stroke button. That's the call I'm going to go on. What I want you to do is first hit in route. Don't do it now. I've already hit it enough times. So hit the in route button, put yourself in route, and then call in on the radio. And what that does is the, the dispatcher will hear you and understand, but they're going to look at their call screen and realize you're already in route. They don't have to do anything. So do the computer first, then check in route. We want to continue using the radio because we're all volunteer. We need to hear the fact that the truck is going. Because if you're still coming up to the station, responding to the station, you can't see by using the, just the MDT that somebody's actually checked in route. So we want to continue to use the radio, but use the MDT first. Hit that and then do it. If you don't, what's going to happen is you check in route and then you kind of look around here and go, let's see. Uh, all right, I'm going to hit the in route button now. What will happen is there's going to be that little gap in time where the dispatcher might hit in route and you hit in route at the same time and kind of confuses the system. So go ahead and just do yours first and then check in route on the radio and everything will be fine with that way. Same with on scene button? <laughs> same with on scene, available, everything. MDT, then radio. Always do this first, then the radio. Now, if for some reason you're driving down the road by yourself, and you don't want to manipulate this, you don't feel safe doing this, just do what you're doing today. It's no problem. The, the dispatcher will still hit the buttons and do everything you need to do that, that needs to be done in order to catalog you. Just realize that the times are going to be off whatever they say, you know, based off of whatever they're doing. So what happens sometimes is we have 
one dispatcher who might be working three or four incidents, and you check en route, well, she's still doing something else over here, and when she finally gets around to coming over here to hit this button here, that's why your times are off slightly. Uh, sometimes, quite honestly, they, they forget. They get busy with another call that pops in there. So those are always things that come up and, and, uh, and happen within a call. By having the MDT, that puts the power in your hands, in your capabilities, so that you can log all of your times and your times are exactly correct. And again, Firehouse just simply sucks all this information out of here and fills your report out exactly as it is. So Engine 24 with an MDT is going to get its exact times based off of whatever it is you type in from here. Can you, now we've seen it once, can you take us through a call from start to, you know, from start to finish? Sure. 